What's up, my friends? Thanks so much for being here. If you are new here, my name is Kim. I post two times a week. And so if you like true crime like I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But today's case is about Dinell Lane and Michelle Wilkins. Dinell Lane was desperate to cover up her lies. And so what she did was she put an ad out on Craigslist for free maternity clothes. Michelle Wilkins would unfortunately respond to that ad. Let's go ahead and jump right in, you guys. Dinell Lane was a 34-year-old former nurse aide who lived in Longmount, Colorado with her boyfriend, David Ridley. Dinell had two daughters. One stayed with her dad a lot and then the other one lived in the home. Dinell was not working at this time and so David was the sole breadwinner of the household. In 2014, Dinell would tell David that they were expecting a child. Even though David really didn't want any more children, he already had a grown daughter so he wasn't really looking to get pregnant with Dinell, but he was excited nonetheless to once again be a dad. Dinell told that it was going to be exciting because it was going to be a boy. There was girls in the family already. So of course she was excited for the news and to have a baby boy. Over the course of her pregnancy, she would post pictures online of her belly bump that she had going on. She would she posts ultrasound pictures of the baby. And then Dinell's friends also had a baby shower for her. They decided on the name James. And so they were generally just super excited to have this new baby boy in their family. And the baby shower was a lot of fun. Everybody showed up. She got a bunch of clothes and everything seemed to be going well. Dinell posted an ad on Craigslist for free maternity clothes. She said that she was so far along that she was just bursting and that the clothes didn't fit her anymore. And so Michelle Wilkins, who was seven months pregnant, she was just ending her pregnancy. She responded to the ad. She's very interested in the clothes. They're expensive and she's just giving them away for free, so why not? So Michelle Wilkins was a 26 year old woman. Her and her partner Dan in Colorado there, Michelle and Dan were expecting their first child and it was a baby girl and her name was Aurora. They had the baby room all prepared and ready for little Aurora. Her friends threw Michelle a beautiful baby shower and Michelle and Aurora were set for basically her birth and the first year. And I have to say through all this, Michelle is an amazing person and we will talk more about Michelle, but let's just talk about the day in question. So March 18, 2015, Michelle in hopes of scoring some new maternity clothes and to finish out her pregnancy, Michelle answered the ad, headed over to Dinell's house to pick up the clothes. Throughout the day, they're texting back and forth and they're saying, yep, I'm coming. And you know, Dinell's just checking to make sure she's still coming. She says, yes. And then Michelle sends a text at 1151 that says, I am outside. So then Michelle gets out of her car, goes up to the door and goes in. Well, Dinell starts chatting her up. She's explaining her pregnancy, everything that's going on with her. Michelle was a little surprised because when they were texting, she said that she was bursting at the seams. Well, Michelle's thinking, well, you don't even really look that far along. She especially didn't look like she was bursting. But, you know, Michelle's not questioning it. That's what she said. So whatever. It was a red flag for her. But, you know, she's giving away free clothes. What, you know, whatever. So Dinell in this time is just talking her ear off. Michelle was there for an hour just chatting it up. Dinell is telling her all her life story about troubles with their daughters and trouble in their relationship and just going in thick with Michelle. And Michelle is the sweetest person that she just sat there and she was just giving her an ear, you know, just letting her vent. Michelle thought that Dinell was just lonely and so 
you know, Michelle was like, ah, I got some time to kill. I'll, I'll sit here. So she did. Danelle ends up asking her size. And so she puts a bunch of uh, maternity clothes into a bag. They're still chatting and whatnot. But well, as time went on, Michelle was like, okay, we need to wrap this up. I've been here long enough. I have to get it going. Michelle heads to the door and she's ready to go ahead and walk out the door. And it's like, oh, thanks so much. You know, I appreciate the clothes. And then Dinah was like, hey, wait, wait, wait. I have some girl clothes that I can give you because I don't need them. I'm having a boy, so you can have these clothes. Michelle really didn't need the clothes, but because she just had this baby shower, the baby was all set, but she's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take a look at them. And so she's like, okay, yeah, they're downstairs in the laundry room, so let's head down there. Michelle was a little, you know, thrown off by this. She really didn't want to go downstairs, but she was being polite, and so she just ignored that uneasy feeling that she had. And then she walks down to the basement. The basement isn't like a creepy crawly basement. It's a finished basement. There's a laundry room, storage room, and then Dinell's daughter's rooms down there as well. But what was odd is that when Michelle got downstairs, she noticed that all the windows were all covered up. And so you nobody could see in and nobody could see out. She's like, okay, that's weird, but okay, let's look at these clothes. So they go in the laundry room. Dinelle shows her these clothes and Michelle's like, eh, you know, I, I'm pretty much all set, not really interested, but thanks so much. You know, I really appreciate it, but I really have to go. Thanks so much for your generosity. And so Michelle starts heading up the stairs to leave and she feels like a hit on the back of her and she's like confused. And so she turns around to Dinelle and is like, was there a spider or something on me? What was that? And Dinelle was like, yeah, but then just keeps striking her, just keeps hitting her. And Michelle turns around and puts her arms up and is asking, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And so Michelle's fighting to get up the stairs and through the doorway while Dinelle pushes her back. And so now they're completely downstairs again. And off to the left, or I guess it depends on which way you're standing, there's a bathroom right there. Well, Dinell was trying to push Michelle into this bathroom, but Michelle is putting her hands up and she's holding and she's fighting. And so Dinell wasn't able to get her into that bathroom, but she was able to push her into the bedroom. The bedroom was Dinell's daughter's room and she got her in there, threw her on the bed. Dinell was yelling at her saying that she didn't trust her and that she was going to call the cops on her. <laughs> Michelle's like, please call the cops. So Michelle grabs her phone and is, she's going to call the cops. Like, what are you doing? And that is when Dinell just lost it. Her aggression now hit a 10. She is just growing more and more aggressive. She grabbed a pillow tried to smother Michelle with the pillow. And then when that didn't work, she tried using her hands. Well, she w this wasn't working. Michelle was putting up a fight. So that wasn't working. So then Dinell grabs a lava lamp and sh she bashes Michelle over the head with this lava lamp. The lava lamp shatters everywhere. There's like an oil inside of the lamp and it's just wet and everywhere. This didn't knock Michelle out. Michelle was a fighter. And so Dinelle grabs a piece of the lava lamp shards and stabs Michelle in the neck with it. Dinelle was trying her best to make sure that Michelle did not walk out of that door that day. She's a very, very, very sick woman. Michelle was still conscious. Dinelle tried strength her again but of course at this point there's oil from the lamp there's bleeding from her neck it's just slippery she just cannot do it Michelle was putting up a fight and just keeps asking Dinell why are you doing this to me and Michelle throws her arms up and says I don't know why you're doing this I love you oh my gosh even though everything that's going on Michelle Michelle is still trying to be a kind person 
That will come more into play later, but Michelle really is the salt of the earth. Michelle later said in the moment that she really did feel that way. They had just talked for an hour. You know, she felt like they were becoming friends. And so she thought maybe this would connect with Dinell, but Dinell's response was, if you love me, you will let me do this, and then stabs her again. Michelle replays what Dinell said in her as it's going on, and she's like, whoa, it kind of clicked with her. Dinell wants my baby. Let me do this. And so she's like, oh, this is bad. You know, well, she knew it was bad, but you know, at this point she knew her motive and she knew she needed to fight and stay strong just for babe, the baby. So nothing's working. So Dinell switches it up once again and she jumps on top of Michelle strad straddling her knees on her shoulders and then just pushing as hard as she can onto Michelle's windpipe. This does force Michelle to go unconscious. Dinelle then grabs two knives. She's already had prepared to perform a C-section on Michelle. Dinelle never went to medical school. Like she didn't know what she was doing. It was very messy. It was gruesome as you can imagine. So she removes baby Aurora from Michelle's body and takes the baby upstairs to the bathtub. You would think through all this that Dinell went through to get this baby, that she would try to keep the baby safe, but she doesn't. It appears as if she didn't really care if the baby survived or not. She was just wanting to cover her lie and that's it. Dinell's boyfriend, David, and her were supposed to go to a prenatal appointment that day. And that day, David had told her prior to this appointment, because there was many appointments that they were supposed to go to, but something came up for every appointment. They just never were able to. And David, months before this, she, he was getting suspicious. He knew something was going on. And he's like, if you don't prove this to me or tell me what's going on, then you and your daughters need to move out of the house. Now, Dinelle wasn't working. She didn't have any money just to move out. And so she needed to cover up this lie. She needed to either produce a baby or she was going to have to leave. In her mind, that's what she's thinking. In the end, David stayed with her for months, so I doubt he was ever going to leave her. He just wanted to know what was going on. You know, you, you've been pregnant for almost a year. Like, what's going on? That's all he wanted to know. But she saw it, or at least the prosecution presented their case in that way, that she was desperate. She was going to be homeless. She was, you know, going to lose the love of her life. You know, she had all these, these motives of what's going on. Now it's after 2 o'clock, and David's texting her and calling her, you know, he wants to go to this appointment and he's like, you're not getting out of this one this time, lady. And so he's texting her and, he, and she, he's calling her, but, but Dinelle's not answering the phone. He sends her a text and is like, why aren't you answering? And so finally, just after two o'clock, she calls him and she needs more time, right? She needs to clean up this mess that she made. I mean, it's all in her daughter's bedroom and so... She needs to make sure that she cleans up. She stalls them. She says, hey, there's some paperwork that needs to be filled out at the girl's school. Can you stop by the school and fill that out before you come home? And so David agrees to do this. So it bought her a little bit more time. So during this call that when she talked to him to ask him to drop off the papers, David described Dinella as being very calm. Like he didn't see or sense any distress in her voice. And, and that is just bizarre. Could you imagine performing a C-section and doing all this and then having a calm conversation? Oh, hey, you know, can you fill out this paper? The adrenaline that must have been running through her and to just be calm, I, I just feel like that's a special kind of sick. I, I tell you, I just... I don't know how one does that, but she did. So Michelle is downstairs, uh, cut hip to hip on her stomach and is stabbed and bleeding in the bedroom. 
Dinelle ended up rolling Michelle off the bed onto the floor and then stripped all the, the sheets and the mattress pad and the pillows and everything. She stripped those off, put a load of laundry in. She hid the pillows and garbage bags under a crib that was in this laundry room. It was like a laundry storage room. It was a pretty big room. And she ended up doing like two loads of laundry, like one was in the washer, one was in the dryer. She took off all of her clothes, put them in a garbage bag with some paper towels and some other blood soaked items. In her cleanup effort, she ended up taking uh, the knives. There's one left in the bedroom and then she took the other knife and put it in the kitchen sink. It still had blood on it, but she took it to the kitchen sink. Meantime, David is on his way to get Dinell for this prenatal appointment. David was super excited about the appointment because the date just kept on moving out. They would show up to appointments in which David would take off work to go to these appointments and Dinell would just make excuses as to why they were not seeing them. Wrong day, the doctor got called away, etc. Just excuses. And so he, he was definitely skeptical because at this point, it was 10 months since she told her he was even pregnant. And you know, you don't find out until you're two months pregnant. So it's been going on for a year. Like, come on lady. And it, what surprises me about that is David had been through this before. So it's like, dude, what the heck? Like, I don't know. I guess he was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. And Dinell was determined to keep the lie going. She even put a post on Facebook that she had the baby in January. Like what, like didn't that spark anything with David? Like were they not friends? What the heck? So David walks in the house and Michelle is in the bathtub with Michelle's baby, insisting that she had a miscarriage. She was only wearing a bra and pants at this point. He walked into the bathroom and he looks in the tub and he sees the baby with the placenta still on the baby face down in the water. So David ends up grabbing the baby out of the water, turns the baby around. And this is just another example of why I think Dinelle was not trying to save the baby, that her end goal was not to raise a baby, but just to cover her lie that she had been telling for months and months. But unfortunately, the baby was lifeless from there. Uh, so David is extremely upset. He's confused why the baby was in this state. And so he gathers them together and they drive both of them to the hospital. And so they arrive at the hospital. They're at the hospital by 2.47. Dinell was carrying on when she got there. She was like, save the baby and oh, my baby. And it, But of course, the baby was past the point of no return. So once Dinell finds this out, it was like she instantly calmed down. It was like, whew, I'm glad that's over. And David was beside himself. He was walking around the room crying, you know, holding the baby. And Dinelle is just looking at him like, okay. And then the doctor, by this time, you know, he, he gave him a little bit of time to hold the baby and just go through this grief period. But then he needed to examine Dinelle to make sure that she didn't do any damage and you know, just check everything out. Well, Dinelle refuses to get checked. She's telling the doctor that she she doesn't matter, you know, don't attend to her, attend to him. And it's not really clear on who him was. Was she claiming that Aurora was a boy or was she talking about David? It's really confusing if she was still trying to live this illusion that she, she had lied for so long, was she convinced? I don't know. But the, the doctor knew something was going on, like this isn't making sense. So they eventually, after some convincing and talking, they convince her to do an exam and an ultrasound. And they showed no evidence of her being pregnant ever, not then, not before. And so the authorities were called to investigate what the heck was going on. So at this point, Dianelle comes clean. Well, kinda. She says a pregnant girl came to her with a knife and Dinelle had to defend herself, but took the knife from her, but she stabbed herself. Um, she didn't want anything to happen with the baby, so she ended up removing the baby from her to save it, is what her story was. What kind of nonsense is that? It makes no, sa no sense whatsoever. Ma'am, excuse me, uh, you're a bit out there. Nobody does that. She was arrested and taken to the police station. 
Meantime, Michelle is in the basement, lying on the floor, profusely bleeding. She comes to. I mean, it's a freaking miracle. She realizes that her stomach had been cut and she could feel like pools of blood. She pulls her maternity pants over her cuts and gets up and makes it to the door. And she wasn't sure if Dinell was still in the house. And so she locked the door, you know, just hoping she wouldn't be able to get in the house in the room if she was still in the house and she makes it back to the bed where she found two cell phones on the bed she assumes one is dinelle and one for sure is hers she's extremely dizzy she grabs the cell phone falls back on the bed she couldn't unlock the phone she was so weak she couldn't see but there's that 911 feature on a cell phone, and so she ends up activating this 911 on her iPhone. Okay. 911, her strength on this call. I am so glad they were able to get to her as fast as they did. She was trying to stay awake and just keep talking on this call and you know to make sure that she just keeps on talking so she stays awake. Michelle had lost half of her blood. I mean she was to the point where if she was on that floor too much longer she would she would no longer be with us. She was barely alive the worst cut being the hip to hip. Dinelle's attempt of a C-section was later found out that she had looked it up online and did Google searches. And the physician said that it was not actually half bad. It's something that a first year resident would perform how one would do it. So she must've did some intense searching. So in the meantime, you know, Michelle was able to call 911 but Dinell is not telling anybody that she's at the house. I mean, even though she's caught, she said there was this 
incident that happened, she was not sending help for Michelle at all. Michelle was taken to the hospital. They rushed her into surgery. Her partner, Dan, was notified. He unfortunately found out the worst news of his life. His girlfriend's in surgery and his daughter had passed away. And so he was able to hold baby Aurora. He, even though Michelle wasn't awake, he was holding her by her bedside. And when Michelle woke up the next day, of course she had tubes everywhere, one you know in her mouth, helping her breathe. When she woke up that following day at 7.30 in the morning is when she found out. And she was fighting with the tube and Dan knew instinctively that that's what she wanted to know. And so he was able to say, I'm sorry, she didn't make it. It's just heart wrenching. That's all she wanted to know. And unfortunately, the news was just not good, like horrible. So Michelle is just obviously beside herself screaming, why, you know, why did this happen? And then Di Dinelle is over here. She didn't deviate from her story. The story that makes absolutely no sense at all I cut the baby out to save the baby. She came clean about faking the pregnancy for the last year and states that she had her tubes tied because of her 19 month old son died. He died in 2002 from a drowning in a neighbor's pond. Apparently she was in the house with her two other daughters and got distracted and 19 month old um, son ended up drowning in a pool. And I mean, drowning in a pond. The investigation was open for the son after this case because they were thinking, whoa, if you know, drowning, this all sounds way too familiar. But after they did another autopsy on him, it was ruled that it there was no red flags with him. It truly was a drowning. And so she's had her tubes tied since 2002. It's 2015 at this point. So she's had her tubes tied for a while. What's interesting to me is I got my tubes tied when I was in my 20s as well. Uh, and it was not, I wasn't married, I only had one kid, and so the doctor really gave me a hard time, and he really wanted to make sure that I understood that this isn't reversible, you can't undo this. I imagine that most doctors are like that, and so I can only come to the conclusion that Dinell really didn't want more children, and especially how she acted after the baby was born, as far as she didn't try to save the baby. She didn't call 911. She didn't do anything to prevent the baby. Her her measure was to put the baby in a bathtub. I, I don't understand. I don't understand anything about this lady, but I just really don't understand that. During the court hearing, you can see Dinell and she just seems unmoved. She doesn't really have a lot of remorse. At least she's not showing a lot of remorse. I mean, it really takes a sociopath to be able to fake a pregnancy and then go through the actions to cover up her lie. I, I mean, just the pain alone that she imposed on Michelle and Michelle's family, she just never apologized. Dinell's family apologized for her, but Dinell never apologized herself, which is ridiculous to me. Michelle took some time to put things together. She needed to heal both mentally and physically, but she was to go on to the Dr. Phil show, so you could go search for that if you're interested. But she really wanted to share this message as far as listening to your inner voice. Don't worry about being rude or offending anybody. Just keep yourself safe. If your gut is telling you this doesn't feel right, then listen, listen to that inner feeling. Cause I do the same thing as, oh, you know, I don't really wanna do this, but I don't really know how to back out of it. So she's saying, offend them, do whatever you need to do. Just keep yourself safe if you have that inner feeling. And it's great advice because how many times have we been put in a circumstance where we're like, I don't really feel good about this, but you know, you, you just don't know how to react. 
And I, that's exactly what happened. And she just wanted to share that message, which is a great message. And I love the fact that she's using her tragedy and turning it, turning it into something positive. And that's what she's done throughout. She's just an amazing person, in my opinion. Everything that she's been through and to try to turn it into something positive is something that I, maybe even myself, I don't think I could do. I'd be so caught in anger that I don't, I don't know. I just don't know how I'd react, but I'm very impressed the way that she carries herself. It's still not known what the heck Dinell was thinking. Like it doesn't make any sense. It's, she took the time to plan up to the point of getting the baby, but it's almost like she put no thought or planning into after. Like, what was she gonna do if Michelle passed? What is she gonna do with her body? Like, I, I, what was she gonna do with the baby? I just don't think she thought the plan all the way through. It's like she put a lot of effort into that point and then it just goes crazy from there. It just makes no sense. And of course, she's not saying what's happening, so we'll never know. Dinell's charges included four charges of assault, one charge of attempted first degree murder, unlawful termination of a pregnancy. She pleaded not guilty and she wanted to take it to trial, so that's what they did. Prosecution claimed she had a plan. Even though it was a flawed plan, she still had a plan. There was intentional evidence, her Google searching, hiding evidence after the fact, not telling the police that Michelle was in distress at her house, and the list goes on, but those are just a couple of things. The defense states she was trying to save the baby and things were messy and not planned and that the defense was trying to get manslaughter instead of first degree murder, attempted murder on the attack of Sweet Michelle. Uh, manslaughter would have carried a lesser sentence. Ultimately, she was found guilty and received a hundred whopping years, which is completely granted. She didn't get first degree murder for Aurora, the baby. That was a whole Democratic, Republican abortion law thing. If you want to look up the trial, I'll link it below. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but 100 years, Dinell is never going to see freedom again. So whatever her charges are, it is what it is. And Michelle was happy with the outcome. She wasn't disappointed with the 100 years. She felt like she got justice. I wish the best only the best for michelle and her family because it didn't just affect her i mean there was a dad involved as well and then grandparents and friends and it just the trickle effect of dinelle's actions it spread out very wide dinelle clearly is a very sick person i cannot wrap my brain around what she was doing what she was thinking i feel like she planned to a certain point and then it just she lost control and didn't have a plan did she do this really just to keep her boyfriend and did she actually want another baby even though she got her tubes tied i don't know i there's just i have a lot of questions and i thought by watching the trial I would get some of those answered, but the defense called no witnesses. They just said convict her of manslaughter, not first degree attempted murder. And so it, it really answered nothing. Dinell never took the stand in her defense as well. I don't think we'll ever get any real answers. She got a hundred years and I, I feel is just. She got what she deserved. And hopefully she gets some mental help because clearly she definitely needs it. One of her other messages is buying things on Craigslist. I think that goes without saying. You know, just meet in public places. Don't go to people's houses. There's more and more cases coming up where people are finding their victims through social media, through different platforms digitally versus just grabbing you off the street. So just be cautious if ever 
you are meeting anybody. I, it goes without saying, but sometimes it's nice to hear. I've bought some items from Facebook Marketplace before, and uh, this girl said, hey, come look at my kitchen set that I have because I needed a dining room set, but I was buying lamps from her. And I went in her house, and as soon as I walked in, I mean, she was a 20 year old and she didn't, she seemed harmless and she lived a really nice place. But after I left, I didn't feel uneasy at the time, but after I left, I'm like, what am I doing? I just went into a complete stranger's house that I don't even know. I've been put in circumstances where, you know, I should have made a better decision. Luckily nothing happened, but now I know that it's, you just have to say, oh no, I, I'm good. Just send me a picture, you know, whatever, or bring somebody else with you because of course I was alone or meet in public places. If you've made it this far, you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, check out my Captured Killer uh, playlist and watch a couple more videos. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Love you guys to death. See you in my next one. Bye. Purchased a home right in Longmount.